we look at the Myrtle Avenue elevated as it was first in the 1950s and then in the 1960s. The open platform 1300 series cars were the last open platform cars with manually operated gates anywhere in the world in service. And they lasted until about 1957. During the off hours of the day, trains consisted of three cars. In rush hours, two three-car trains would be coupled together to make a six-car train. At night, only a two-car train would shuttle back and forth on the Myrtle Avenue L, and there were no ticket agents or token agents uh, on duty at the time. Instead, the conductor would collect the fares on the train by means of a Johnson fare box at his position in between the two cars. These cars were convertibles in that the side window panels could be removed in the summertime and replaced with screens so that fresh air could circulate through the cars. With their forward-facing seats, they were perhaps the most fun to ride on of any rapid transit cars in the New York City area. Fresh Pond Yard was a haven for a good many surplus cars awaiting scrapping, as well as cars that were not in service during the off hours on the Myrtle Avenue L. North of Fresh Pond Road, the L came down to ground level, as it still does, and headed to Metropolitan Avenue Terminal. Here's a southbound train of convertibles heading south into Fresh Pond Road. For most of the life of these cars, all of the side panels were removed in the summertime. Later on, only the six center panels were removed, and still later, only the four center panels were removed in an economy measure to save labor in the shops. But right down to the last sum of, of operation, there were some panels removed in, from each car. This is on ground level, heading north, approaching Metropolitan Avenue Station. We cross over the Long Island Railroad's old Met, Met, uh, Montauk Division, and we head into the ground level station at Metropolitan Avenue. From Metropolitan Avenue down to Broadway, the Myrtle Avenue L is shared with subway trains from the Broadway BMT elevated subway extension. So we have both the narrow gate cars and the wide subway cars using the same platforms here. And this was one reason why the gate cars continued in operation as long as they did. The gate man or conductor in between each pair of cars could caution the passengers to step carefully over the wide gap between the car sill and the edge of the platform on the stations between Broadway and Metropolitan Avenue, which were also used by the subway trains. The portion of the Myrtle Avenue L south of Broadway, from there down to J Street, of course, uh, did not accommodate subway cars, and the platforms were uh, proportionately closer to the car sides. There's a southbound subway train, the BMT subway train, leaving Metropolitan Avenue. And at Metropolitan Avenue, both tracks could be used by both, subway, by both subway trains and elevated trains. A view of the motorman operating his controller in the front cab of the train. A northbound Myrtle Avenue train rounding the curve, leaving Wyckoff Avenue and heading up toward Fresh Pond Road and Metropolitan Avenue. And a southbound train coming around the curve into the Wyckoff Avenue station. 
Notice that here only the four central window panels had been removed and replaced with the screens or sets of bars to let open air circulate into the train. Central Avenue was another station on the portion of the line between Metropolitan Avenue and Broadway and was built to subway extension standards so it could accommodate the steel trains of subway cars as well as the open platform wooden and composite bodied gate cars. Near the end of service, the six car trains in rush hours were reduced to five car trains. The off hour trains remained as three car trains and the nighttime trains remained as two car trains. But in rush hours, we had trains of five of these 1300 series convertible trains. Since all the window panels are in place here, the scene was taken during the late autumn or winter or early spring. Washington Avenue Station was down on the portion of the L south of Broadway, and here we see how the old platforms in the middle of the L were close to the car sills on this portion of the line served only by the L trains. Nostrand Avenue was another station on the portion of the line between Fresh Pond Junction, between uh, Broadway and Metropolitan Avenue. These are views on the old part of the elevated line, passing not far from the Brooklyn Navy Yard. Way up in the distance may be seen the station at Broadway, where it crossed over the uh, BMT Broadway elevated subway extension. This southbound train has made its station stop and is heading down toward Bridge and J Street. The Bridge and J Street station was originally just the Bridge Street station, and in 1944, when the elevated trains over the Brooklyn Bridge were discontinued, the Bridge uh, Street station was lengthened down to J Street to make it the Bridge and J Street station. This is a view at Broadway with a subway train turning off the Broadway elevated subway extension and heading up onto the Myrtle Avenue L. Here we are at the Broadway station of the Myrtle Avenue L over the Broadway Myrtle Avenue station of the BMT Broadway line. We have a southbound elevated train now approaching Broadway. Since it's a three-car train, we may assume that this is an off hour during the day. This northbound Myrtle Avenue elevated train is leaving Broadway and is heading up toward Metropolitan Avenue. The subway train is coming off the Myrtle Avenue L and turning onto the Broadway elevated subway extension of the BMT lines. This train will head over the Williamsburg Bridge into Manhattan. Vanderbilt Avenue was another station on the portion of the line south of Broadway. All of the stations on this line had central platforms in between the the tracks except for the Grand Avenue station which had outside platforms at the point where the Lexington Avenue L branched off the Myrtle Avenue L. The Grand Avenue station was eliminated and was completely demolished after the Lexington Avenue L service ended in 1950.
A northbound train approaches Broadway Station from downtown Brooklyn. Here it crosses over the BMT Broadway subway elevated extension. This northbound train is heading up the Myrtle Avenue L toward Broadway and Metropolitan Avenue probably from Vanderbilt Avenue Station. Here we have a southbound train heading toward Bridge and J Street pulling into one of the stations on the portion of the line south of Broadway. And a northbound train heading up toward Broadway. This is at the Bridge and J Street station, which was a very long station because, as I previously stated, the Bridge Street station was lengthened in the direction of downtown Brooklyn toward J Street to make it into the Bridge and J Street station. The station had entrances and exits at both ends, at Bridge Street and at J Street. J Street was the busier of the two because it was the place where you got the free transfer to the independent subway down below J Street. That was the replacement for the uh, elevated service over the Brooklyn Bridge, which ended in 1944. Some views, views inside the waiting room of the Bridge and J Street station, showing the stained glass windows and a train which has just arrived and has now departed. There is the J Street end of the Bridge and J Street station as the structure was rebuilt after the section from there down to Adams Street and then over the Brooklyn Bridge was demolished. We're now in the era of the Q cars on the Myrtle Avenue L and this train is crossing Flatbush Avenue extension on the Goethe Bridge which spans Flatbush Avenue extension without central columns. The Q cars were brought back from the 3rd Avenue L in 1956 or 57 they were placed in service on the Myrtle Avenue L, still with their high clear story roofs. Within a year, the clear stories were lowered so that these trains could pass through the BMT subway on their way to Coney Island shops for maintenance. At that time, electric fans were installed inside these cars for proper summer ventilation. I'm sure a good many of the riders missed the open-sided convertible cars in the summertime but the Q cars were more economical to operate. These Q cars had been rebuilt from open platform cars in 1938 for service on the Flushing Line to the New York World's Fair. They remained on the Flushing Line until 1949 and then were brought to the 3rd Avenue L where they were given IRT motor trucks. The Q cars were permanently coupled in three car sets of motor, trailer, motor with one number and individual letters denoting a three-car set, such as 1622 A, B, and C, making a three-car set. During off hours, a 
three car set would comprise a train on the Myrtle Avenue L, and in rush hours two sets would be coupled into six car trains. For the 1964 and 65 World's Fair, one three-car set of cue cars, 1622 A, B, and C, were chosen to represent the 1939 World's Fair paint scheme and were painted blue with orange striping. They went back into service on the Myrtle Avenue L, coupled with other trains, other sets of cars, and getting dirtier and dirtier, although one might still spot the orange and blue paint scheme on 1622 A, B, and C in a view here and there throughout this film. We're back at Wyckoff Avenue now in 1969, the year that the Myrtle Avenue L south of Broadway would be abandoned. This is Metropolitan Avenue, the old station before it burned down, the old wooden station. There was a fire here, and this has since been replaced with a newer structure. The Q cars, of course, were taken out of service upon the abandonment of the portion of the Myrtle Avenue L between Bridge J Street and Broadway. Since the upper portion of the Myrtle Avenue L continued to be served by subway trains from the BMT Broadway subway extension, there was no longer any need to continue operating the Q cars and they were the last wooden-bodied uh, passenger cars in service anywhere in North America, as far as is known, at the time they were taken out of service in 1969. This is still at Metropolitan Avenue. Metropolitan Avenue Station has never been put up on an elevated structure. It's, it still remains at ground level, along with a few other BMT, former elevated stations such as East 105th Street and Rockaway Parkway on the Canarsie Line. A northbound train approaching Metropolitan Avenue. It has crossed over the Long Island Railroad's Montauk Division at Fresh Pond. Now we're back down at J Street and there is the J Street end of the bridge and J Street station. Another view of the Q cars crossing over Flatbush Avenue extension on the Trust Bridge. <laughs> A rush hour train this time. Notice the six cars two three-car sets. Some views along the Myrtle Avenue L. This one at Hudson Avenue where the Fifth Avenue elevated once turned off. You can see the girder work of that remaining up on the left there in the upper corner of the picture. Here's a southbound train approaching Bridge and J Street Station. There was a cr double crossover just beyond the station so trains could use either track in the downtown Brooklyn Terminal. Now we're heading out of the Bridge and J Street Station. We'll take the crossover to the northbound track head over the Truss Bridge, over Flatbush Avenue Extension, 
and ride farther up the Myrtle Avenue L. There are various stations, all central platforms along this portion of the line, Tompkins Avenue, Navy Avenue, Vanderbilt Avenue, and so forth. And here's Broadway with a Myrtle Avenue train overhead. The first three cars are 1622 A, B, and C. The orange stripe uh, along the letterboard can just barely be seen, coupled to another unrepainted three-car set. The same train is now leaving Broadway, heading south on Myrtle Avenue toward Bridge and J Streets. From the subway level platform at Broadway, we look up at the Myrtle Avenue elevated, and a train of Q cars has just made its stop and is heading southward toward downtown Brooklyn. Another six-car rush hour train heads toward downtown Brooklyn, stopping at one of the stations with Center Island platforms along the line. An overhead view of the Myrtle Avenue L looking up toward Broadway with a southbound train passing by one of the housing projects in the Brooklyn's Wallabout area. Pulling into a station and heading toward Bridge and J Street in downtown Brooklyn. looking the other way from the rooftop toward downtown Brooklyn. This northbound train is heading up toward Broadway and Metropolitan Avenue. From this angle, the queue cars looked a bit strange with the roof clear stories lowered. Nevertheless, they continued to serve well until 1969. This is at Grand Avenue, where the Park Avenue L and the Lexington Avenue L had turned off, as we just saw the stubs there. The Grand Avenue station had been eliminated by the time these views were taken, but portions of the steelwork could still be seen where the Park Avenue elevated, which was demolished around 1901, and the Lexington Avenue L, which was demolished after 1950, had joined the Myrtle Avenue L, which lasted until 1969. 